Hi, I'm Mackenzie. I'm Haru. And this is The, the Journal. Journal. The Journal is a diverse show full of amazing documentaries created by the broadcasting students of Centennial College. Due to COVID, we are unable to reach you live, but we couldn't be happier to be back in the studio right here at the Story Arts Center. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. The Journal starts now. Welcome back to another week of the journal coming to you right here from the Centennial College Story Arts Center. We got a lot to get started this week, so let's go. This week, we're focusing on self-expression and how artistic minds think outside of the box. From personal businesses to festivals, the journal is going to cover almost all things creative. Let's start off this episode with a father-son duo who turned their hobby of shirt printing into a platform to showcase their creative minds and their love for culture. This is Craft. George, I work for the Toronto Bike Share. Well, I used to be in the vintage clothing business and my favorite pieces out of all the stuff I used to collect were t-shirts. So I bought a vinyl machine to print off my own t-shirt. My name is Emmanuel George. I live in Oakville and I am a website designer and marketer. I basically do all the technical parts to it. I do a lot of the designs uh, that we come up with and my dad, partner, Richard, uh, he gets involved usually. Well, since I'm mainly making t-shirts for myself, um, my interests are um, social commentary or um, like band, band t-shirts, group t-shirts. This t-shirt is an example of my conscious t-shirts, Black Lives Matter. It was the first t-shirt that I printed when I got the machine. This t-shirt is an example of my personal brand that I'd like to do. This is the beginnings of an artist t-shirt. So step one is basically coming up with the idea. Then you have to draw it in a certain way. You have to work with something that's called vector, depending on the, the way you would like to go. So you can do a transfer onto a t-shirt or you can do a vinyl. You have to flip the design before you print it. That's the biggest step. Make sure you flip it. So I don't know if you've looked at a t-shirt in the mirror and you see all the letters are reversed and you can't read it. If you don't flip it, it's going to do that. So once you have your design and you print it onto the transfer paper. grab your t-shirt and you can tape it to the shirt in a way kind of get an idea of how it's going to look and once you do that you bring it over to the heat press iron out the shirt for maybe five ten seconds you got no wrinkles so everything's going to fit perfectly press the heat down on it for about 20 30 seconds lift it up and then peel off that paper and you got your perfect design this machine about five years ago so I probably might do two or three prints a month as soon as we got the um, the equipment and the software I was there from day one basically I, 
like to do both. I like to do my own brand, but I'd also like to do work for other people, whether it's companies or um, an, another um, designer that wants to do their own thing. I think we want to branch out and do other kinds of designs too, not necessarily transfer paper or vinyl. We want to do sublimation, screen printing, so that kind of will give us more options in the future for what we're going to do. I just like making designs. I've always been into the Adobe products and designing and coming up with cool ideas. So I thought, hey, what can I do with them? Why not throw them on a t-shirt? Isn't it fascinating what a vinyl machine and a heat press can do? It truly is. It's great to see how the two built a small business and worked together to create such beautiful work. You're right. It's also amazing how they express their views and values through their creativity, especially when it's also empowering. Exactly. And that's just one of many. So many people use art to make positive change, just like Melissa Austria, a graphic designer whose work focuses on minimal concepts but is also impactful. This is Bee Country. Hi, my name is Melissa Austria. I'm the creator and designer behind Bee Country Design and Bee Country Shop. So Bee Country is actually my name. So my name is Melissa Austria and Melissa means bee in Greek. And then um, my last name is Austria, like the European country. So I just sort of combined the two. And uh, so it's not really like bear country, it's bee country. So I was originally posting a lot of my design stuff on my personal Instagram account. And one day I just sort of decided it might be cool to have like an Instagram portfolio where I could put all of my own work on there without annoying like friends and family. So um, I made that account and it sort of was really fun because I could create content specifically for Instagram, things like stories and posts. And then this past summer, almost like everybody else, um, I started a small business sort of selling my designs and things that I liked. I would describe my work as minimalist, type-based, and impactful. I mean, I want it to be impactful, so maybe that's a goal. For my Instagram posts specifically, I feel like they're heavily influenced by um, things that are going on in my life or like difficult things that are happening in the world um, that say like I want to address or share my opinion on. And I think it creates a really great community. That's why I think it works really well on Instagram. So my process starts with sketches, always starts with sketches. Everybody in school told me you have to start with sketches. So I do a lot of um, brainstorming, I test different letter forms and that kind of thing. Um, so then after I finish my sketch, um, I'll actually like just take a picture of it on my phone and send it to my computer. Um, then I pull it into Illustrator and sometimes I'll just um, trace over um, like the letters digitally and then I test it out and then I just post it on Instagram. Uh, so I started with selling tiny paper goods and that's just anything made of paper. So my best selling product this past um, holiday season was um, my gift tags and I really pushed the, the Christmas products because um, we were in the middle of the pandemic, so not everybody would be able to be seeing each other. So it was good to like send cards and send gifts. Um, so with the gift tags, what I did, again, I started with sketches of small things that I could die cut with my Cricut machine um, into these like little bobble shaped um, tags. And they were really, really great. Uh, they did really, really well and people really liked them just because it was like this small little um, addition to making your gifts look extra special. So I don't really know what the future holds for Bee Country design and shop. Um, the pandemic has sort of made things really unpredictable. Um, but I mean, I, I would love to hang on to it for as long as I can. Make a really big impact on other people's lives. I feel like that that would mean great success to me if I could um, help other people and impact their lives positively through what I do. I think I'm just going to keep on focusing on growing and expanding my community and audience and we'll see where that goes, you know, we'll see.
That was beautiful. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, yeah, I got it. But really though, that was an amazing documentary about an amazing journey. It isn't always easy to succeed in something you're passionate about. Yeah, it can also be very hard to overcome obstacles, especially if things don't work out in your favor. But that's where the best stories come from, where your perseverance and hard work pay off in the end. Speaking of overcoming obstacles, let's go along the journey of an aspiring artist who battled through depression, but in the process, finds her true love of photography. This is Tuska. I was thinking about it today. Are we born evil? Or we are born good and somehow become evil? If you look at the child that is trying to kill a butterfly, maybe it's not the best example, but I think in moments like that we are just born evil. At the same time, maybe it's not about being good or evil, it's about what makes us do evil stuff. Happy people don't hurt anyone. I am a photographer. I love portraits. And environmental photography is one of my favorite things to do. I believe there is nothing more beautiful than the honest emotions and I'm always trying to depict it. When I do portraits, my job is to be a scene through. I don't want people to feel in front of the camera like a deer in front of the car lights. I want them to be as natural as possible, so usually I talk to them uh, or I ask them to pretend we're standing in the bedroom, dancing in the living room, looking in the mirror in the bathroom and saying to themselves, yes, I know I'm beautiful. Today, tomorrow, yesterday. It's my job to make people feel comfortable and beautiful in front of the camera, not scared and petrified. And it's very hard because people are usually very unnatural in front of the lenses. <laughs> it's kind of funny. When was the last time someone called you beautiful? Close your eyes. Feel it. This is how I want to make people feel in the fragile moments of us being ourselves. What do I say when I talk about depression? I try to avoid bringing memories from this time, but I need to say I used to hate people. I used to hate myself to the point where I wished I would die in a car accident or in a train accident. And I was wishing I would die in an accident to avoid disappointing people who love me. Having depression in Russia is hard. We are raised in the mentality that it comes from a weak mind and laziness. So asking for help is humiliating, and nobody does it. Antidepressants are great. They make your emotions go in a very calm, but yet simple tone. The one thing that I learned is that it's very hard to create and much easier to destroy when you don't feel anything. Photography made me feel excited again. It is a learning process, but every time I take a camera in my hands, I feel that this is it. This is it, Sasha. You found it. Wow, what a story. It's crazy to think about how art has a way to bring light to any situation. Yeah. Art like photography truly gives people a way to express themselves. From painting to film, all art is a form of expression. When it comes to art, it's something that should be shared with the world. Whether it be on a social media account or at a festival, all art should be showcased. I could not agree more. Our next documentary is about the Brazil Film Festival that is hosted right here in Toronto. We'll relive past festivals and explore the behind the scenes of an event directed to a community defined as a visible minority. This is Culture Out of Country. <laughs> Brazil Film Festival Toronto is a film festival that happens in the city for 14 years. Uh, in 2020, because of COVID, uh, we decided to join forces with Brazil Film Fest Montreal and become Brazil Film Fest. Uh, and this year in 2020, we instead of doing a, a film festival at TIFF, we just went online and offered the movies across the Canadian territory.
My name is Leandro Matos. I'm a Brazilian screenwriter and producer. Um, and I've been a permanent resident in Canada since 2018. The director of the festival is called Katia Adler. She produces a bunch of film festivals around the world. She is the director of programming. And I produced the film festival this year with her. Ah, eu comecei na França porque eu morava lá, eu estudei cinema e em algum momento eu quis defender o Brasil e uh, defender o cinema brasileiro. Sete anos depois, me chamaram para fazer aqui em Toronto, em Montreal, duas pessoas diferentes, mas chamaram assim, vem fazer um festival de cinema brasileiro aqui. Não quer dizer, não, não, não quer dizer que tivesse uma verba já, nada disso. Tinha que começar tudo de novo. Also, as an audience person, a person who goes to a lot of film festivals and love watching movies in theaters, I was really, really, really happy to have a Brazilian film festival happening in town. So, having a place to go in town, even if it's just for a weekend, for three days or four days, and you know that you can watch 10, 12, 15 Brazilian films in a row if you want, I was super excited to, to be there. And, and what I saw and what I witnessed was that the people in the audience, they were really happy. And the Brazilians were like cheering our culture. Oh, I love it. I think it's uh, actually much better than in previous years. Some awesome movies, my third night here. I mean, the, the structure is great and I'm very excited for all the movies. This is a great year for Brazilian cinema and I'm, I'm really glad I get to experience it with uh, everyone. We have like a high quality right now, high quality actors, uh, technical industry and it's good to see that our production like have a, some a good space here yes. you know I worked as a volunteer at the 2019 edition at TIFF and what you notice at the festival is that you have like a 50 50 percent division between the audience you have the Brazilian audience people that really want to watch Brazilian movies and feel a little bit closer to home but you also have the Canadian audience. Not necessarily Canadian, Canadian, but people who, who don't speak Portuguese. Uh, it was your first time watching a Brazilian movie? Oh, yes, really. It was the first time. But it's very interesting. You have a very good movies over there. That's great. And what are you expecting for this festival? Well, uh, it's very important that we know that uh, all South America, we have a great production on Cinema. So the main challenges of marketing the festival was actually finding people, because we have experience. We have experience from 14 years uh, with marketing the festival to the Toronto audience and to Montreal. But how do you talk to people in Vancouver and in Alberta and Saskatchewan? I mean, we've never marketed the festival for these people. How do you watch a Brazilian film if you don't have access to it? So. The feedback that I got from a lot of people from the other parts of the country was they were so happy that we had the festival happening online this year because they were able to watch movies that people were hoping to watch for years and they, could, and they didn't have access to that. So the feedback was really positive. But on the other hand, people are not used to a film festival going online. So I think for the first year, it was a great learning experience. It wasn't the result that we were, expect we were expecting because it was a challenge. But we are really happy that we did it and that we were able to provide Brazilian film for our audience across the country. And we found out that we have an audience across the country. It's really important to have a Brazilian film festival, not only in Toronto, but in, across Canada. Uh, the Brazilian community in the country is increasing every year. It's a statement that we are here, we do have an audience. There are a lot of people who are curious about our films and our art and our culture. And it's really great that we do have, we have a film festival both in Toronto and in Montreal that offers that to the, to the audience. And you see the feedback, people like it, people are happy that it's happening. And it's really important that we keep having it every year.
wonderful to see a film festival that showcases Brazilian culture and how they didn't let a global pandemic stop them from wanting to show their love for cinema. Same here. I love knowing that there is so much artistic talent all over the world. And here at Centennial College, we're so lucky to have welcomed such a diverse cast of people hailing from places like Brazil, Korea, and Mexico. And now, our last documentary to end the show, we bring you a film that shows us how different art can still bring a community together. This is Canvas. one of those people who get inspired by a tree or like uh, by something super simple. I usually get inspired by my thoughts. I think a lot. I'm an overthinker. I'm a person who thinks a lot about himself, about his family, about people around him, about like world and like problems that happen uh, with our society. And um, I try to take those thoughts and uh, focus on one and release it, pour over on top of the canvas. Hey, my name is Nestor, I'm 21 years old. Um, I'm a modern calligraphy artist. Um, I'm from Ukraine, and I'm in my third year of studies at OCAD U. I'm studying graphic design, but right now I'm shifting to more of an artistic perspective. My art style is uh, based off the Russian uh, movement in calligraphy. Uh, it's called Calligraphy Futurism. It was created by Pokras uh, a big Russian artist uh, from St. Petersburg. The main focus of this uh, style is uh, to mix different cultures into one complete and balanced modern style calligraphy. I would even call it like futuristic because uh, people don't write like this yet, but I think that in the future they might uh, combine different symbols from different cultures. And uh, by this, I want to uh, unify people. And I also want to bring more balance to the world because I think that the main point of living our lives is uh, to keep everything in balance. Uh, so I'm a Toronto local artist, but I'm originally from Mexico. I was born in Mexico City. I came here to uh, Canada when I was very young. I was about uh, 12 years old, if I believe so. <laughs> so it's been pretty a while. Uh, I'm very focused on a lot of abstract and then non-realistic art. I do also like a lot of uh, very minimal kind of thing on my art as well. I really enjoy creating pieces that create a distraction for people rather than creating something that's already real. Uh, so I will describe my art style as very like non-realistic art. <laughs> so I don't really focus on real art, as in like if I'm to draw a portrait or something, uh, I often do things that come out of basically my imagination. So one of the most uh, things that you see on my art is this thing called Chiquita People. <laughs> so they're basically like cartoons, you could say, out of it. Uh, and then you pretty much see them everywhere in my in my art. So I found like uh, this guy over here. For me, they all called Chiquita People. Uh, they were born out of my imagination. Sometimes I felt lonely when I was younger. So then I just decided to create them to keep me company. Uh, I also like to keep them very on minimal and clean look. So you can see on my art, I don't really fill up sometimes a lot of blank spaces, but then I try to keep everything as aesthetically <laughs> as possible, just because that's how it is. It is created in my in my head. I did graffiti before, and um, my style was based on tagging. 
and I tried to evolve it somehow by adding like other bits. I, I looked at different alphabets um, online and I was taking like some, um, some strokes from Arabic alphabet, mix it with the other stroke of the uh, Chinese alphabet and then Japanese, Korean. I base my style on uh, more of an Arabic characters and I think you can see it because their lines is very wavy. My style is not uh, created yet completely and I'm still trying to evolve it somehow. So it, it can be hard sometimes, uh, especially when I'm trying to create a collection and then I'm trying to make all of them different. But then I do find that like, it is a lot of joy for me to be creating each different piece because uh, it allows me to create something different on each one. So it doesn't mean that I have to duplicate something from the other one. I feel that everyone is a creative person. I just want to encourage more people. I want to inspire more people with my art to create. That's my final goal. I want like different people to look at my art and say like, I want to do something similar or I want to do something on my own. I like to introduce you to my best friend and an inspiration to me as well. This is Kappa. She's a husky and she's two years old. I think I was about 20, 23. I went into a depression. So then I decided that I needed a dog. <laughs> so then I got Kappa and she has been a very important um, thing in my life. She bring me inspiration to push myself every day for more. What a great way to end the show. It truly was. Art is one of the many things everyone can relate to, and I think all the documentaries we showed today did just that. The world deserves to see the amazing art you create. Be encouraged to share the art hiding in your bedroom right now, because all art is beautiful. Well, thanks for watching all of these talented artists and their stories with us. Once again, I'm Haru. And I'm Mackenzie, and you've been watching... The, the Journal. Journal.